everybody to our seventh session of the eSport Lunch Lectures. Um, as you can see, we already started the recording. Um, we will today hear from Sandra. She will share her knowledge and expertise on all things trademark and trademark strategy in the eSport ecosystem. Um, as always with this format, we will have 15 minutes presentation from Sandra and afterwards 15 minutes for any questions you might have or discussions you want to engage with us. The question and discussion will not be recorded, of course, but I will tell you so uh, after the presentation. To keep things into the format, I will give over to Sandra right away. Uh, enjoy the presentation and then Sandra, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Thanks, Moritz. Hi, welcome everybody uh, from my end as well. So today is about straight mat strategies as uh, Moritz mentioned, and uh, we start right away. Um, as you all know, esports is a rapidly increasing field of business with uh, about 9% growth per year. And uh, besides publisher fees and direct advertisement and media rights, there's one field which is growing fast as well, which is merchandising and sponsoring and everything which is related to it. So merch and licensing are on the rise. And what you can see in this uh, slide is uh, just few, very limited and few examples of typical esports merchandise. And of course, there is fashion, but there is also other stuff. Um, uh, like like in the classic sports as well, uh, I can. We are advising one of the soccer clubs as well, not only in the esports area but also the classic sports. So there's uh, they sell everything from cosmetics to toys to toasters and uh, esports. I could see in the last years is going the same direction. Uh, but not only the merchandising is uh, increasing, uh, counterfeits are as well. And you don't do not only see uh, official merch here on this slide, but also pro counterfeit uh, products. For example, here, this is a counterfeit you would not recognize, I guess. Or down there, I guess these are non-originals as well. So this is an area. Um, eSport teams have to cover and to tackle as well with uh, increasing intensity. But merchandising is not only offline or physical, technical, it's it's also digital and especially the eSports area is a digital field, of course. So you see on the left hand side of the slide just one of many examples, the new Samurai Army project uh, of uh, the G2 team. It's uh, an NFT um, collection. You can create your own samurai, uh, but you also see the typical digital merge um, for use in games. There are numerous uh, examples and basis of everything is IP rights. So as a team and as a publisher, as uh, someone who actually wants to sell merch and who wants to license, you need an IP right as a basis. Uh, just to give you a very short overview on potential IP rights, uh, I don't want to go into details too much today because focus of today's session is trademarks. So we are not talking about patents today. Te patents is all the technical new technical stuff. It's about function and not about design. Then on the other hand, if you have an artwork, especially like the avatars I showed you, uh, they can be copyright protected. They can also be subject of a design registration. Uh, copyrights, uh, uh, they are um, or they, they emerge by just on the basis of law. You don't have to register them, even though you can register them in a few countries, like in the US and Germany, you do not register usually, but designs are registration rights usually as well. But if you want to protect uh, the brand, uh, you need a trademark. And um, because trademarks consist of 
words usually or logos. So logos can be protected by a copyright or a design as well, but words, word terms can only be protected by a trademark and they have to be registered. As mentioned, trademarks are the basis of merge and licensing and it can be various kinds of a trademark. The main, the main category will be a word or a logo, but it can be um, audio works as well, or like melodies, it can pos be position marks, it can even be only a color or color combination. So everything which I can um, get registered in a register and which can be somehow be displayed so that, that it can be searched by others. It serves as an indication of origin. So of course, if I have Apple or Coke or other brands or Nike or anything, you know, it's coming from a different from a certain company. So the indication of the origin is the most important function of a trademark. But it also builds trust in quality, which is very important to ensure that trust and the quality standards in licensing deals. I get on that in a little bit more detail in a few seconds, but it also has an advertising and communi communication function. And every time when I discuss with clients trademark filing strategy, it, it comes down to quite simple questions and I just want to give you an overview on these questions. So first of all, I usually discuss with clients. So which road are we going down? Is it the trademark road, is it the trademark road only, or is the design feature elements so important that we also go for design registrations? Sometimes it also makes sense to not go for a trademark at all, but go for design registrations for certain artworks but because they are easy to get and there is a little bit less costly than trademark registrations. When we go down the trademark road, it's always about the decision, word or logo or other. So word and logo marks are the most common um, types of trademarks. And in many of the cases, we register both. The third thing, and this is very important, and actually it goes along with the the decision whether to go for a word or a logo mark is do proper trademark clearance. Uh, usually clients, sometimes clients come to me and say, yeah, we just did the clearance, we Googled it and everything's fine. And I said, yeah, Google is nice to have a Google search, but actually we need to check the trademark basis, uh, the trademark registries and check whether there are any identical or similar uh, trademarks and if yes uh, we have to discuss how to deal with this and this might also influence the choice of your mark so we might decide on rather go for a logo mark to, to, to get a better distinction from third party rights or even change the trademark and go for another idea and sometimes this can take time so always plan enough time for trademark clearance before starting to use a trademark in the course of trade. First, uh, fourth question, which also goes along with the trademark clearance issue, uh, is which goods or services you want to protect your trademark for. You can't protect a trademark in a very abstract way. It's not like a copyright, which is independent from the products, the goods or services. So you have to choose which products or services you want to, to register your trademark for. And it is a cost issue because the more goods or services you want to cover, the more costly the trademark registration gets. Uh, and our entire pro product and services world is divided into 45 classes. Um, it's 34 product classes and the rest is service classes. So you have to pick and choose. And if I, for example, want to protect my, soft, my, my trademark for software, but I found a, an identical earlier right of a third party for cars, for example, that might not be an issue. 
but it will be an issue if I found the same trademark for software services because this is similar and then we have a problem and have to decide how to deal with it. As with respect to eSports um, organizations, uh, these are just the most common classes. It's not very surprising. Of course, you have the entertainment class, which is the core service class for eSports because uh, sports and entertainment are in class 41. And then the most common merch is, of course, class 25 clothing. You have software in class uh, you have software in class nine. I have to go back. Um, and of course, toys are very important as well and any printing goods. And, you know, it's it can be a long list. As mentioned, the more classes I pick, the more the more uh, costly it, the registration will be. Another issue with respect to costs is the last category. You have to decide when to pick a trademark or to file a trademark. This is a territory. Like, what's the relevant territories? Of course, um, the more territories you get, the more expensive your trademark registrations will be. And uh, usually we start small and then we expand the, the territorial protection uh, with respect to the relevant trademark. <laughs> Especially uh, there are certain strategies you can um, <clears throat> file either nationally through foreign council, but this is very, this can become quite expensive. Uh, but there are simplified trademark filing strategies, uh, which can be discussed ca on a case-by-case -case basis. If you choose the filing territories, there are a couple of questions I usually ask clients. So, what's your important territories? And of course, this will be most of the time the home base of the team or neighbor regions maybe, but also, um, very important is where are the roasters? Where are they active? And sometimes even where do the roaster members come from? Uh, in classic soccer, some it, it often happens that um, the soccer club comes along and says, ah, can we just protect the club logo and the club name? Uh, now in Serbia and Japan and in somewhere, and I ask, What's the reason for? And I said, yeah, we just we just hired a new player and uh, he has a huge fan base. So we will expand merchandising ex activities to that particular country and we do, do, do not have protection there. So this is something which might change, um, but this is something which might become reason of expansion of the trademark uh, portfolio. And of course, very important is as well, uh, where do you want to do by licensing deals? And sometimes there are also requests by sponsors and licensee, potential licensees. I, for example, had a case uh, just last year where it, it was a beer deal, licensing deal about beer, selling beer in Canada. And the relevant trademark was, of course, not protected in Canada for beer. So we, because it was a very important licensing deal, we immediately filed a trademark there and spent the costs just to have a right to be licensed for the deal. And as said, uh, this might be subject to change. So this is an ongoing issue and um, the basis of the evaluation will be also, so sometimes you, you see you sell merch to some countries uh, where you don't have trademark protection yet. So this is then it's time to actually expand the trademark portfolio rapidly. Once registered, there are a few things to um, look out for. Uh, one is trademarks are subject of the use requirement. If you do not use trademarks within a certain period of time, uh, in Europe it's five years, in Asian countries it's only three years, you might lose the trademark if someone uh, threatens it with a cancellation claim, claim based on non-use. So trademarks are subject to the use requirement, which is very, very important to know. 
And of course, he should monitor and enforce the trademark, which is very important for licensing deals as well, because licensees expect that you will defend the trademark against infringements and that you will maintain the trademark as well. And this is also on a very ongoing basis. With respect to licensing, just a few uh, things. Um, especially as an eSport, if, if you look through the, the glasses of an eSports team, you will not have the expertise to, I don't know, manufacture bicycles, cars, toasters, towels, or you name it. Uh, you can't have the expertise and you can't have the manufacturing uh, manufacturing um, capabilities to actually produce and manufacture these products. This is done by licensing deals and um, it, the advantage is very easy. You, you have sales and you earn the royalties and uh, it, it strengthens the reputation of your brand and it actually it expands the spread of the brand and the um, the reach of the brand and also um, the use requirement is um, fulfilled. So for in-house teams it will become and it usually be becomes quite important uh, at the time, especially if the teams are become very successful to actually draft and standardize the licensing de uh, deals and agreements to have them ready. Like with big sponsors, big sponsors and licensees will often uh, request their own agreements, but also, but the standardized templates in-house make it easier to actually also deal with those agreements coming from, coming in-house and from the sponsors. So this is something one should actually aim for, have standardized agreements ready as, as soon as possible to make it easy for the in-house team. And uh, what's some essential issues and points of licensing agreements? Of course, the mo most essential is define the trademark or the trademarks. Is it the word mark or is it the logo or is it both and how can it be used the territory define the territory because trademark protection is territorial i never have a trademark just worldwide so i have to define the territory and also what are the products what are the licensing products because you might want to provide a or might want to grant an exclusive license and for the exclusivity it's very important to specifically um, limit the, uh, the scope of the exclusivity because uh, the licensee might want to be protected against other licensees and he wants to make sure that the exclusivity is preserved. Then very important as well and might be required by licensees for manufacturing sub-licensing I would all usually um, not permit sub-licensing unless otherwise requested for the manufacturing facilities. Then you have both um, uh, sort of deals. Uh, it can be worthwhile to just do lump sum payments for smaller products and smaller licensing um, for other product categories, royalties might be. Uh, more beneficial for the team. And very important from a trademark owner perspective is ensure the quality of the manufacturing, ensure the right of inspection even if you don't use it, and get, get samples which are very important to control quality on one hand and be able to prove use of the trademark to courts or IP offices on the other hand if you need it and to actually get it into your archives. And sometimes relevant can be, especially if it's exclusive uh, trademarks and exclusive, exclusive products, and especially with Asian uh, contracting partners, it can be very useful to actually define very precisely the distribution channels to not find your product 
somewhere in discounters or elsewhere where they can where they are sold very cheap and then promotion marketing activities as well there are other there are other um regulations you have to include in the deal or should include in the deal but these are the most important ones and uh, if the licensing agreement is uh, done nicely, it serves as a very reliable basis of the party's cooperation. And if the branded product under the license sells successful, it can be a very valuable contribution to the revenue stream of the esports team, which actually closes the circle to the beginning of today's presentation. Thanks very much for your attention.